Welcome to the channel. Today we continue the craze of temperature sensors that have temperature probes attached to them. This time it comes from the excellent engineers over at Sonoff and comes with a huge LCD display as well, which is a really nice touch. And if that wasn't enough, they've also released a temperature and humidity sensor without a probe in the same range. Both IP65 waterproof rated and visually virtually identical devices. Both with huge displays, except one has an on-screen humidity reading with no probe, and the other has a probe but has no humidity reading. Your time is precious, so let's insert the probe and raise the temperature and see what these devices are all about. I'll be reviewing both the O2LD and the O2WD together, as they are basically variants on the same device. Now these devices are released on the 15th of April 2025 and are available in addition to the existing SNZB02 and the O2B temperature and humidity sensor, which are some of my personal favorites. The device without the display is the O2 and the O2D comes with a display and even a kickstand, although both of these units are indoor only and don't have an IP rating. For the new devices, both have huge reported 55mm LCD displays that show temperature in both Celsius and Fahrenheit, battery capacity status, and a signal status icon that's used for pairing. Both devices are IP65 waterproof rated, so they are basically splash proof, but not fully waterproof, so don't go submerging them. However, the probe on the O2LD is fully waterproof, so can be submerged and works from minus 40 to 115 degrees Celsius. So it's suitable for most of your home user cases, although it's not oven proof. For that, you're going to need the Sonoff BMT-01. Links to the review in the pop-up above. Both head units are UV resistant, so they are equally happily inside as they are outside in the direct sun and they work from minus 20 degrees to 60 degrees Celsius. They are small enough to be discreet at 62.8 millimeters tall by 85.5 millimeters wide and 21.8 millimeters thick, with the WD weighing in at 65.6 grams and the LD at 86.2 grams, but that doesn't include the cable or probe. Now in my previous testing, the O2 range has been very accurate and extremely well made and the O2WD and LD are no exceptions. Temperature accuracy is quoted at plus or minus 0.5 degrees Celsius for both the LD and WD, with the WD having a humidity accuracy of 3% relative humidity. We'll be testing that later. Power is supplied by an oversized button cell, the CR2477, that is becoming more common in smart home devices thanks to its excellent battery life it offers. As such, when combining with the energy efficiency of Zigbee 3.0, you should expect about two years of fateful service. Next to the battery is the location where you can find the pairing and reset hole. Sonoff even include a reset tool in the box, although a paperclip will do the trick. With this comprehensive range, ask if you need outdoors. That limits you to the O2 LD and WD. Then ask if you need a probe. If that's the case, you need to pick the O2 LD. If not, select the O2WD and get the added advantage of a humidity reading. As for indoor use, you can select whichever you wish. Then it comes down to the mounting options, if you need a display and if you need a probe. Now, two things you might not know about these two new devices. The O2WD without the probe has a built-in data store. So even if it's not communicating with the EWE Link application or Home Assistant instance, it will store its readings. How long it will store is not stated, but it's great to know that this facility is available. And finally, a point for anybody that lives at altitude, well above 2000 meters. Sonoff lists a warning saying that it's not suitable for sale or use at above 2000 meters. Security risks may arise when the altitude is above 2000 meters. But since it's estimated that 95% of the population of the world lives under 2000 meters, it's probably not going to affect you. There are two ways to install either the O2WD or the LD, either via the EWI Link application or direct and local into Home Assistant. Both methods use Zigbee as the communications protocol. 
Installation via the EWI Link application is only possible if you have a Sonoff Zigbee hub installed. I have a ZB Bridge Ultra, but any of the Sonoff hubs listed in the description will work fine. Open the EWI Link application. I'll be adding the O2WD to a bridge, but the same process applies to the O2LD. Select your bridge. Press Add to add a sub device to your hub. Now press and hold for 5 seconds the pairing button inside the back of the unit next to the battery using the reset tool. The device will be found. As I have my EWI link linked to my Amazon Alexa, it has been added thanks to the integration. Now press next. The SNZB02WD will show up with temperature and humidity shown. Now you can select this to view the graphs of the readings, which obviously in my case is blank as this is only just being paired. Now if you want to integrate with Home Assistant directly via Zigbee, that's just as simple. Open Home Assistant. Navigate to Settings, Devices and Services. Press the Add Integration in the bottom right hand corner. Select Add Zigbee Device. Press and hold the reset button for 5 seconds. The device will be found and added. Optionally rename and allocate an area. Now press back, search for Zigbee and select Devices. Now search for O2. The Sonoff SN ZB O2 WD will now show up. Select it. We can see the temperature and humidity both displayed to one decimal place and the battery shows at 100%. This is a local integration and not through the cloud, so this will work even if the internet goes offline. Sonoff devices are known for their accuracy and solid robust build quality, so I'm expecting these devices to live up to their accuracy claims. As a comparison, I'll be running this test against a SwitchBot outdoor temperature sensor and a SwitchBot Meter Pro. Links to both reviews in the description below. In the test, I'll be plotting the results on a mini graph card, but also using Plotly. Links to the tutorials in the description. As you can see, both of these cards serve up the same data, but in very different ways, with prospectively very different target audiences. I'll be using the Plotly graphs as they are more relevant and accurate in this context. Firstly, let's look at the temperatures. The reporting frequency is roughly every 12 minutes. Remember, the more frequent reporting means shorter battery life. Also, the reporting frequency is variable based on changes in the temperature, so this is acceptable. Zooming in to the end of the graph, we can see that the SwitchBot temperature and humidity sensor is the highest reading at 23 degrees, and the SwitchBot outdoor sensor is the lowest at 22.7 degrees, with the O2WD and LD reporting between those outliers. But that's a variation of only 0.3 degrees, which is within the 0.5 degrees claimed accuracy, so all three sensors are spot on. Moving to humidity, we can see that the reporting accuracy seems to be much less frequent. However, this is only because the reporting only seems to occur on a change of percentage humidity for a whole percentage, at least for both the SwitchBot devices. Hence, looks less accurate, but in fact is just as frequent. However, the O2WD reports on every 0.1 percentage change in humidity, hence giving you a much more granular view of the humidity. Zooming in to the end of the graph, we can see that the O2WD is the lowest reading at 59.4%, and the SwitchBot outdoor temperature sensor is the highest at 63%. Since quoted accuracy of the device is 3%, it's totally plausible that this is accurate, and hence I classify this as a pass also. So the SNZB02WD with temperature and humidity with no probe, or the O2LD with probe and no humidity reading, what do I think? Well, there is a current craze about adding temperature probes to sensors, and I think it's great that manufacturers are listening to their target audience. These sensors are evolutionary and not revolutionary. Taking the O2D and giving it IP65 waterproof rating and a temperature probe, then adding a magnetic mounting option and extended battery life. They are excellent build quality and are accurate, and offer features that customers are looking for and not just in the minds of the marketing department. And when you consider that these were part of the O2 range of temperature and humidity products, I think you can see the true value that Sonoff bring to their customers and are totally worth any perceived additional costs.
Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then hit that like button, comment and share. And if you want to have access to similar material, then subscribe or maybe become a channel member and get early access to material plus other perks. And if you want to join other like-minded people, then why not join the Discord channel, where smart home enthusiasts meet to solve each other's issues. And if I've helped you make a purchasing decision, then maybe a super thanks or a PayPal donation. It's really appreciated. Until the next one.